Good morning, this is TCR, TroyCommunityRadio.com. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN. And time now for the Mayor's Report. With me, of course, Mayor Michael Beamish. Good morning. He is here today, and uh, Clint, David, and all the listeners out there, what a wonderful week we had. Oh, it, I'm telling you what, last weekend, I think that's the best weather that we've ever had for the Strawberry Festival. You know, I, I know Eric Roeder gives credit to our our guy upstairs uh, for providing beautiful weather, but I'll tell you, it was a great weekend, and for the clubs, the organizations that use this as a fundraiser for their promotion of other goals and activities throughout the year, it was perfect. And uh, I give credit to Eric Roeder, his uh, committee, and all the volunteers. <laughs> I walked around and... Uh, Boy, you know, every booth had people helping do something. And just what community spirit is all about by volunteering. It takes a lot of folks to make that Strawberry Festival happen. And I also got to put a big plug in, uh, the worship, uh, the... Uh, oh, on Sunday morning. Oh, yes. You know, uh, it, it was just a wonderful declare. The square on the square was a wonderful. Caleb Ingram deserves a lot of credit for making that happen, along with Eric Rose and putting that at the time when we would open up the fair or uh, the festival and still have a worship service uh, as part of that. Excellent. So a new addition to this year's Strawberry yes. Festival with that. And well attended, by the way. Uh, and I'll tell you what, the Strawberry Festival was well attended. <laughs> Talk about a sea of people, and it even looked like there were more things over on the levee than what there's been. There certainly was a crowd over there. Yes, there just was. Just as much as downtown. I, I heard a lot of the, the club's organizations uh, sold out of whatever product they were selling, and that was just part of the weather, but also the turnout. And, uh, uh, with the crowd. Right. And like you said, it's uh, the festival is for the nonprofits, and that is a springboard that... Uh, excels a lot of these groups through the year. Yep, it continues. So it's one major event, but it continues throughout the school the uh, school year, the, <laughs> the, the year in general. Uh, also, this past week, uh, team leadership Troy. Absolutely, yeah. I saw That's, the red shirts down here in the morning, them. and uh, do we had twenty nine strong. Uh, members Now, these are uh, juniors going into their senior year, so we're asking them to be role models for uh, the underclassmen in their respective schools, and uh, most of them are Troy High School students. So it gives them an opportunity to uh, showcase their leadership skills as a senior. Uh, and they spend a, uh, a week walking around different departments, different organizations, learning a lot about the community. And, and they learn how the government works here in Troy, too. We do have, on uh, Wednesday, we uh, invited uh, all the uh, teen leadership uh, Troy uh, st students to come, and, and we talked about our statutory form of government, some of the things that we do, how we operate that might be a little different than other jurisdictions around the uh, Miami County. All right. Uh, council, you had that on Monday night, but it, it was kind of like council with a twist because <laughs> not everybody was there. Well, we were missing three people for different reasons on council, and so we had not enough members to suspend the rules or uh, to proceed with any kind of legislative action. Now, we did have six ordinances, no resolutions this time, but six ordinances on the agenda. However, with only six six members, you couldn't um, proceed by suspending the rules, which is a possibility, but you need seven members uh, to agree to suspend the rules before you can move forward to uh, to vote on legislation. So now Since what does that m make things happen? Well, what it means is if you don't have the seven members all agreeing to suspend, then you have to wait and move on to another reading, okay. which in this case, with six members, they couldn't even uh, attempt to suspend the rules, which meant if anything was less than three readings, if it's third reading or more, you can vote by just uh, affirmative vote. But if you have uh, a first reading or a second reading, Reading, then you must suspend the rules before you can uh, vote on that piece of the legislation. Okay. 
So it rolls on to the next council? It rolls on to, and in fact, every piece of the six ordinances moved to at least a third or second reading, which uh, will be will take place on um, uh, September 8th, or September, June 18th. <laughs> I'm moving too fast through summer. It's it's a strawberry festival, wore us all out. It's fatigue, yeah, that's right. Thank you for saying that. But uh, we will have a public hearing on the 18th of June, and that will uh, be one of the ordinances that moved to a second reading and uh, we did have a, a public hearing on one of the ordinances uh, with no comments pro or con and this is on Crescent Drive uh, moving from an office commercial to a multiple family residential district and we uh, uh, it was scheduled to have a public hearing there were no comments uh, on that so we will be on the agenda for the 18th and as well as another public hearing, which uh, will be a, uh, on a, another uh, rezoning issue uh, from a single family residential back to an agricultural residential district, and that'll be a public hearing as well. So of the six, we had a public hearing on one, we will have a public hearing on another, and then the others will come forward with a, uh, a second reading. Okay. Now, uh, also last night, you highlighted the uh, with Rumpke in the recycling, our new prize winner. Well, something we've tried to do, we were going to do this quarterly and look around our community for those individuals who are really demonstrating that recycling is important. And, uh, and we did that, and Alina Weaver was the second recipient, uh, and she lives on Wheeler Street. And uh, Rumpke pre presented her with a uh, gift bag, and it had a lot of, uh, of special things in it. And it was to honor her um, for her efforts in recycling and taking it seriously. Um, you know, the city certainly appreciates recycling because we do that. We have a, a, a cart for recycling and a cart for trash. It certainly makes it easy when you you're already supplied with the trash can and the recycling can. Absolutely, and, and Alina saw that and took it upon herself to, uh, and in the rewards program just kind of highlights somebody that is demonstrating and providing uh, uh, an environmental recycling uh, possibility and, and, and to move forward. So, you know, that's the, the recycling is not just for today. No, it's, it's, it's our for, future. It's for our future. Thank you, Clint. And that's true. So uh, first one was uh, Danielle Metz, and this one is Alina Weaver, and we congratulate both for their efforts uh, to demonstrate to all of us good role modeling through recycling. Absolutely. And uh, so everyone, make sure that you're on top of your recycling because you may be the next Recipient. We're going to do it quarterly. Okay. And, uh, we have people out there looking and watching. Uh, Jerry Mullins is one. He's this, uh, our supervisor, and uh, street foreman. And uh, he's out and about looking, as well as the Rumpke, who does our recycling for us. All right. Uh, speaking of Jerry Mullins and the uh, road department, starting, well, they were busy through the Strawberry Festival, really busy when the Strawberry Festival came to a close because that's when uh, the road diet began on Monday. Well, that's true, and I should give a, a shout out to our city crews because they did a marvelous job of cleanup. Yes. And there were volunteers that helped out with that cleanup, and it opened the roads quicker, and it did allow us to do some safety uh, considerations for the future uh, in our downtown quadrant area. So you will see some changes. There will be some, uh, some different patterns, uh, traffic patterns, but also I like to think of it as a safety issue. I don't know how many times I was crossing the street in the quadrants where there may be a red light but somebody didn't see the red light and went through the red light. Uh, while somebody was trying to pass across the whole street. This way, with the uh, safety zone, as I'm going to call it, a safety zone, you can go halfway, only having to look at what traffic one right. way, 
get to the safety zone, look at the other way to see if it's okay to cross and cross. And hopefully uh, the, the vehicles will move through the downtown a little safer, not as fast maybe, but that's all safety feature. And if they see somebody in one of those safety zones, then they can stop, let them pass the other half. It's like going halfway instead of all the way. Well, and we've been watching because we do. We've got a great roost up here in the Horizon on the Square building. And actually, what we've managed to witness as we've watched this week, folks are slowing down as they come in. You don't see the, you know, the odd vehicle that just comes flying through the square. I haven't heard the horns blowing like normally you would hear in the morning. And people are really paying attention. And I have not seen an issue where uh, someone is crossing the street and someone just blows out into the... Uh, out into that crossing lane. Well, and also it looks pretty because we've got little flower pots uh, yes. there. So well, not it, little. Well, they, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Clint. I'm just yeah. They're not little. They're pretty uh, out there. But it just adds to the ambiance of our downtown that you and I have always talked about the beauty of our downtown. They're planted very wonderfully. Yeah, I, I can, love the plants. They fit in great with the downtown. Now if we can add a safety feature to the element of downtown, the beauty of downtown, we'll get used to it. Now, I understand. Uh, believe me, I, I, my wife and I went through town a couple of times just to kind of get used to the new pattern. And, and after a while, it, it, you don't worry about it becomes the light. easier. And, yeah, it becomes easier, and you're more noticeable the pedestrians as well. So it's a safety feature, and uh, I think in the long run we'll get used to it. It she, did add some spaces into our parking downtown. spaces. Yes, it did add parking spaces. So in a way, one of the areas of concerns we've heard over and over again is we need parking. Well, this is also another effort, a secondary effort, but it also added some uh, spaces and parking. Uh, by changing the way we move through downtown. Uh, but and if does. people want traffic lights, they can just walk one block either way, <laughs> and they can come to a traffic light, wait till that light changes before you walk across the entire street. Right. This way, downtown in the quadrants, you really only have to go halfway. Stop, look, and move the other half. All right, and and the drivers will be also should be watching out for the pedestrians crossing in the crosswalk. They don't have to look up. No, nope. look at the lights. They can look down and see uh, the, who's walking. That someone is there, for sure. Well, um, you know we've said it before, folks. Don't take well to change. When when it's something. Well, this is the way we've always done it, and. Uh, this is kind of looking to the future, and this increases, I believe, traffic flow through the downtown and, like you say, makes it safer. That's the key. You know, change for the sake of change isn't always good, but change for a, a safer, better tomorrow is a good thing. And and I hope people give it a chance. We're going to look at it for a, uh, at least a month and see if it's working, if people are adjusting to it. And I think they will. I think in the long run, you're going to see uh, it's good for uh, people, pedestrians. It's good for uh, uh, motorists as they come through into town, just yield and go through the, uh, the circle and move on. Now, uh, there's some people that say that they don't drive the circle now. Uh, I say that maybe they can still work that block around the outside. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> but it is, it's really simple to come in, and you yield to the traffic on the circle. So entering in, you stop and wait for your chance to come in. Right, and, and then you have the right of way once you're on the circle. I just ask everybody to give it a give it a chance. I think when the long run, they will see that is a beneficial to our downtown, to our merchants, to our quadrants, to our visitors, and uh, those walking across the streets will be safer. And a byproduct, we got some extra parking spaces out of it. Absolutely, thank you for saying that. <laughs> All right, Mayor, thank you so much. Uh, this has been the Mayor's Report. Anything else you'd like to add in this morning? Uh, again, just council, next council will be on June 18th and uh, 7 o'clock is City Hall. All right. Thank you so much, Mayor thank Beamish. You. This has been the Mayor's Report. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJF.